No WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. No WWE Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch. But what we did get was a shit load of shit. Here is your Raw review, guys, for the 7th. Yeah, it's a couple of days late. Deal with it. The 7th of March 2022. I mean, if this show was good, then maybe I would sit up live and watch it and then review it straight after. I'd be desperate. I couldn't wait to review it. But in reality, this show is hands down fucking god awful. And I get accused of being a WWE fanball be fanboy because I, I also say that AEW sucks well. Honestly, it's not my fault wrestling sucks in 2022. Doesn't make me an AEW hater. It doesn't make me a WWE fanboy. Uh, WWE sucks just as much as AEW. But at least WWE do get some things right. They have some decent things. There's some people that when they're on a WWE show, you can always rely on and you know that you're going to get a half-decent segment out of it. I don't get that with AEW. But there was no half-decent segments tonight on Raw. Um, yeah, there was people I liked on the show, but the, what they did, I did not like. There was just, there's nothing good about this. Absolutely nothing good. Bar, like, one decent match, there's, like, there's nothing good. So we kick off the show. Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins call it the Raw Tag Team Champions. They're complaining about their WrestleMania spots getting stolen or whatever. At this stage, I wouldn't even have a WrestleMania. I don't think any of these people deserve to be at WrestleMania. I'm looking at what Seth Rollins was doing now. I'm looking at this shit he's doing with this Kevin Owens, this big fat bastard. I'm looking at this crap that Seth Rollins is doing now. And I com I'm comparing it to what he was doing about six months ago in his feud with Roman Reigns. And it's like, that stuff was actually pretty good. How can you go from being pretty good to just absolutely nothing in six weeks? I mean, heading into Mania season, wouldn't it make sense to have the best version of Seth Rollins? But we've got this horrible version that nobody wants to see. I don't get it. I do not fucking get it. Alpha Academy come out. Orton says he's got big words for everybody, and that big word is win. Riddle's like sitting there questioning it because it's only three letters. And then they have the match. Um, the, oh, towards the end, Gable gets beat up. Seth Rollins has a curb stomp. Riddle runs in, throws him out the ring. Riddle pins Gable, and we've got new tag team champions, RK Bro. Not too sure what this accomplished. They lost the belts to Alpha Academy just to win them back. I think Alpha Academy is actually a pretty solid team. And while I didn't really mind, I actually thought the run of RK Bro was decent. I don't think it's got much, I don't think there's much legs left to it. I, I think the correct thing to do would probably be to split them up. It doesn't look like they're going to do that now since I put the belts back on them. I mean, I thought we were going to get Orton versus Riddle at WrestleMania. I thought we were destined for that match, but it looks like this tag team is going to continue longer. And I, I just don't know why. But the match itself, it was okay. It was the best thing on the show. This was okay. Everything else was dog shit. But this was okay. And it doesn't really surprise me. Because the Alpha Academy RK Bro feud has been the most consistent thing on Raw. So it didn't surprise me that this was the best part of the show. Uh, where they go from here, who knows? Who, who cares? But uh, yeah, RK Bro, your new tag team champions. Speaking of champions, we move on to someone who should never be a champion, Dana Brooke. Taking on Tamina, 24-7 title. Tamina's got her in a Boston Crab. There's talking about, the commentators are mentioning how there's no way out. She can't get out of this move. This move's locked in tight. And then the next minute, Dana Brooke just rolls up Tamina into a cover and gets a free count. It's like, rolls through. Like, what the fuck? Just way to make the commentators look absolutely stupid. Uh, Tamina looks stupid for losing when she had her opponent in such a, you know, vulnerable position. Dana Brooke was in the Boston Crab for about a minute and then escapes the ring and doesn't even sell her back or nothing. And then the Japanese dude gets in and says that he loves Tamina and that Dana Brooke cheated and that the real winner is the love of his life. Fucking garbage. This 24-7 title belongs in the bin. The hardcore title actually looked like a pile of shite, but the, the, the wrestlers that held it, the stories it revolved around, the segments it was in were actually good. This 24-7 title is basically... It looks... The way they perform with this 24-7 title is how the hardcore title looked. A big bag of shit. It's falling apart. They need to cancel this. It's, it's, it's awful. 
It's fucking awful. I, I didn't when it started and our truth was the champion. It got stale really, really fast. I think for the first like week or two, first maybe first month, it was okay. Then it got stale quickly. But now it, it is it is borderline awful, and it's been the same shit now for months, absolute months. Our truth, Tosawa, Tamina, Reggie, Dana Brooke, god awful. Just fucking move on. Get that title, pour it on gasoline all over it, and set it on fire because. I don't want to see that 24-7 title again. Uh, we've got The Miz and Logan Paul up next. They have a Cleveland homecoming tour. They're putting over Cleveland. Then The Miz fights Jerry Lawler. The Miz, Jerry Lawler wants to put over Cleveland. Jerry Lawler puts over the fact that Cleveland should host WrestleMania. Then The Miz changes. The Miz went from getting cheered here. He was putting over his hometown. And then when Jerry Lawler said that Cleveland should get a WrestleMania, The Miz starts burying it and starts bringing up all these sports teams that were never successful or people that have left Cleveland to go to other teams to win trophies and all this stuff and it's like I, I don't get it I, I don't get why the Miz always just went from being like you know pro Cleveland to negative on Cleveland just over what over Jerry Lawler coming out I don't get it I don't want to see Logan Paul either this was a waste of time they said Ray is a legend, and, and they buried his son Dominic. That, that sounds about right, to be fair. I mean, Ray's good, but no, no one wants to see Dominic. The Street Profits then were backstage. They demanded to be front of the line for a tag title shot, considering that they pinned RK Bro last week. It looks like we'll, we'll probably get a, some sort of four-way title match at Mania. That's what I'm going to assume. whoop they do Do I want to see it? No. <laughs> Speaking of tag team matches with Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa versus Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode up next. Another match I did not want to see. Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa win. Then Dolph Ziggler gets on the, the mic and says, Oh, you may have pulled one on the Dirty Dogs. It, it, he's talking as if the Dirty Dogs never lose or, you know, it's a rare thing that the Dirty Dogs lose and that he's surprised that someone managed to beat them. Like, fuck off. The Dirty Dogs lose every single week. The Dirty Dogs, they're shite. Are they called the Dirty Dogs because they resemble dog shit? Is, I mean, is that why they're called the Dirty Dogs? I don't know. Sigler says tomorrow, triple threat match. When Champa distracts Braun Breaker, he's going to pin him. Fuck off. And then he, he talked about it's going to be another title he gets to add to his trophy cabinet. Another trophy he gets to put in his trophy case. Yeah, all right, Sigler, you, you've won, you know, you've won a fair, you've won a few amount of belts. But how many of those belts can you actually remember and say Sigler had a good he had a good tight he had a good run you know he had a good run with that belt or that was a good reign you know none absolutely none and it's all shit at the end of the day I mean Roman Reigns you're you're never going to forget this reign as Universal Champion you're you're just not going to forget this reign and a reign doesn't necessarily have to be long for it to be remembered but I would definitely say that the long ones. Are more easily remembered, but you can you can have a you can have like a, a mid length kind of title reign and it still be remembered because it was a good reign. Nobody remembers Dolph Ziggler's shit. I don't. I think he's had two world titles and he. I don't think he's made a successful defense on either one. So I mean, I could be wrong. I just don't remember because we're all shit. So there you go. There you go, Dolph. And if you win the NXT title, you'll probably have a shit title reign with that too. So who cares? Uh, up next with almost versus Apollo Cruz. I feel like they've done Apollo Crews dirty. He actually felt like he had a bit of momentum behind him when he came out with the whole Nigerian thing and he had big commander Assis and he had the big pole. And this guy actually beat Big E clean. This was back when they were beginning to push Big E. So I went over Big E for Apollo Crews was pretty good. But now he's been pretty much... He's been pretty much jobbed out. So is commander Assis. They're making out... Commander Assis is looking at almost and they're making out, oh, commander Assis is, is finally you know, got met a match for himself, but it's like, Commander Assis is fucking never won a match, you know, Commander Assis loses every time we see him, so what does it matter if he's looking across at like a ricochet, or whether he's looking across at an almost, he could be looking across a fucking duckling, he's still going to lose at the end of the day, so what does it matter if almost is slightly bigger than him, you know, don't get me wrong, at, at the end, they kind of had like a face to face, and the camera was panning on them from like the floor, and they looked big, and when you see big guys, it, it is, man. You know, it's a, it's a physical, like, attraction. It's, it's like, you know, it, it just looks cooler. Like, you see two big guys going to fight, and you're thinking, 
well, fuck, that might be cool. If, if it's two midgets, it just doesn't do the same thing. You know, it's like, it's like King Kong versus, you know, Godzilla. It's, it works because it's two big fucking things. It doesn't, if it was like an ant versus a bloody moth or something, they, they would, no, ant versus moth. No one's going to see that. They're going to see King Kong versus Godzilla, right? Maybe not the best analogy, but it's all I've got at this point of time. And then the commentators, I think it was Corey Graves, he was burying the, the giants of the past. He was saying how almost isn't this slow, clumsy giant, you know, from like past generations. Don't know if this is a dig at Big Show or, you know, a dig at Andre the Giant or just a dig at people from the past. But, I mean, come on. Those guys are way better than fucking almost. And he's saying that almost isn't clumsy, almost isn't slow. What shit's he watching? I mean, pure lies there. Pure propaganda. I mean, Cody Graves should probably go and get a job on CNN at this stage because he's just talking shit and telling lies. Then we up next with Edge. The lights were off, so Edge looked dark. What did they do? Edge says that last week he wanted to face the best AJ. He wants to face the best AJ at WrestleMania. So he did AJ a favour by beating him up. But AJ also done him a favour because Edge went to a place last week where he's never went before and it felt great and he, he loves it. He feels in control. He feels in control of his, you know, the ring. He feels in control of the wrestling universe. And he said that, I, I can't remember, he said that, uh, he said he was on top of some mountain. Honestly, I can't remember the word that he said, but I don't even know what the word was. I mean, I think though that we need to realise that people watching their shows, we ain't fucking rocket scientists, right? Not everybody, like, let's be real, how many people are watching this, about 10? Alright, let's go, let's be real, about 1.7 million. How many people at the 1.7 million would have knew that word, the edges? And I'm not a dipshit, I'm just being, I'm, I'm being honest, I, I did not know the word. I did not know the word. Maybe I just misheard it, but I, I can't even tell you what he said. I don't even know what it begins with. It was just, I, I don't know, it was some word, I'd need to rewind it. But I, I didn't take it in. I don't sound like anything I've heard before. He said he's, he's sitting at the top of Mount something, whatever mountain, whatever word he said, mountain. And he says the few is phenomenal. Oh, he took a dig at you. You know what I mean? Like people actually probably think this is a great promo because he mentioned phenomenal, in uh in his you know in his words in his dialogue. And it's like, I mean, what do you do? I mean, I, I could if I had the Rock's phone number, I, I could phone the Rock up and say, "Pi." You know, or candy ass, or you know, it's fucking, or hey, hey, rock. Um, do you know what my new role was? You know, oh, roll, know your role. You know, like what? Just because they fucking mentioned phenomenal. I mean, whatever, man. What the fuck ever? I like Kedge, but this this promo, I don't think done it. Didn't do it for me. If you liked it, fair enough. But I didn't like it. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan up next versus Queen Selena and Carmella. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan won. I mean, I mean, who really? Who fucking cares? Again, I think we'll probably get some multi-tag team match. I know Naomi and Sasha Banks want a shot at the tag titles on, from SmackDown, but I think Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley will also be a team. Uh, I wouldn't, and I don't know, free, freeway tag matches just seem a wee bit odd. Normally they always make it up to four because there's like four corners or whatever, so they always try and make up to four. I think. If they do it, they'll probably try and make up the four. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had another team in and we have a, a women's tag title match at uh, WrestleMania. Don't want to see it, but I think we'll get it. We then had Finn Balor versus Austin Fury. Damien Priest came out. He, un he unleashed the Damien on Finn Balor. whoop they do uh, They're clearly... I mean, I could be wrong, but with all this like evil talk and you know, Damien, the devil, it, it would appear... That they're they're setting up for Damien Priest versus uh whatever the the demon the demon Finn Balor and my problem with that is Damien Priest has been losing now pretty you know a lot he's been losing a lot recently in the past couple of months he's lost clean quite a few times whereas the demon has only ever lost once it was to Roman Reigns and it certainly wasn't clean. So if they do have this match, how are we supposed to honestly believe that Damien Priest has got a chance of winning? I mean, not that I want to see it. I really couldn't give a shit. But I think we'll probably well get that. And to me, it's a no contest that the Demon Finn Balor wins because 
Damien, Pri Damien Priest has been losing to everybody, so why why would he have a chance against the, the Demon Finn Balor? That makes no sense to me. And then to end the show, Kevin Owens came out and then invited Stone Cold Steve Austin to WrestleMania to be a guest on the KO show. And I think it's been confirmed that Austin will be at WrestleMania. He will not be competing. He'll be a guest on the KO show. And I said this. I said this from day one. As soon as the news broke out, I said that there is absolutely no chance of Austin wrestling. I said the same for McMahon. But uh, people obviously want to push lies. Or they're just fucking retarded. I mean, for Meltzer, it could be both. It could be genuinely, like, pushing fake news to try and generate, you know, clicks and views for his websites. And it, it could be retarded. I think it's a bit of both for him. I think he is lying, but at the same time, he, he probably thinks there is a chance that Austin could compete. For a guy that has studied wrestling for, you know, what is it, years and years, like 40, 50 years, he, he knows fuck all about wrestling. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. And he can say he's got this and that and he's got awards. Yeah, he's got awards that he makes up himself. Who cares? I mean, just because you're in charge of something doesn't mean that you're, you, you know everything. It, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes people fluke into positions. Yeah, Meltzer might be the the owner or whatever, the head guy in the, the or the wrestling observer. It might be his own company, but it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, I'm not I'm not denying the guy's worked hard over the years, but he he knows nothing. He absolutely knows nothing. The fact that he thinks like the young bucks are like putting on six and a half star matches every time they go out, and that they're better than you know like the likes of the Dudleys and stuff like that. He he doesn't understand wrestling and. If he genuinely believes, I mean, I don't know how anyone with a brain cell could believe Austin would even contemplate coming back. I mean, this is a guy that over the years has had chances. He's had big WrestleMania matches, even matches in Saudi Arabia. I mean, he's had big opponents, big feuds, and he has turned it down. He has refused. He has, you know, backed off the temptation to come out of retirement against Lesnar, against Cena, against Punk. Um... You know, against everybody that's been worthy of challenging. And you honestly think he's going to come back for a couple of week build-up against a fucking fat Kevin Owens? I mean, I mean, it's not even like Kevin Owens is like at the top of the, the, the roster. I mean, come on, Kevin Owens is like legit a mid-carder at the moment. And you think Austin is coming back for a match against a mid-carder at the age he is now? Absolutely no chance. For me... The last chance Austin, there's only two, the last chance Austin had to coming back was against CM Punk. That is it. And the only thing after that that would bring Austin out of retirement after the CM Punk thing is the Saudi money. And it hasn't happened. So it won't happen. Austin will not be coming back. We'll never get Austin McMahon. We'll never get another Austin Rock. Austin will not face Roman Reigns. We won't get Austin Goldberg. We won't get Austin versus nobody, right? We might get Austin coming out, hitting a stunner, and drinking a few beers. That's as good as it'll get. And if you want to watch that, then great. I would pre I would prefer to just watch you know, Austin back in the day. Austin's a legend. Austin's probably the best of all time to ever do this. We don't need to see him back. We don't. I mean, wrestling's fucking dead. With or without Stone Cold Steve Austin. So it's not going to make much of a difference. That's your raw review, guys. I thought this one was terrible. Lately, I've been given AEW Dynamite minus ones. So I feel like it's only fair for me to give this a minus one. Yeah, so I'm giving this a minus one. Just absolutely fucking god awful, guys. Till next time. Peace.